Okay, welcome back. We've already gone over all the boring stuff with ice, uh, all the fundamental stuff, how to move around in the ice tree, how to plug in nodes, how to work with forces, and etc., etc. All that stuff is, is great and all, but where does it fit into, say, a production or a real-life example? How could you use all of this stuff that we've gone over in something real? Well, that's what this uh, set of videos now is going to cover. We're actually going to take a production scene and create something with ice to be used in production. So, the best way to learn is to go ahead and, and go through it, and I'm going to take you through it right now. Let's hit Control O to open up the uh, file browser here, and the scene that you want to open up is called flamethrower underscore start. Ooh, sounds interesting, a flamethrower. So, this is what you should get. It's a blank scene, only has a few lights, and a flamethrower. If we do a render region, you'll see what we get. Pretty dark scene with some simple lighting, and then we have ourselves this uh, nifty little flamethrower here. So you're probably already thinking to yourself, okay, does this mean we're going to create a flamethrower using ice? Well, yeah. Why else would ice be used for? Let's go ahead and use ice to create ourselves a cool flamethrower here. So you can start to get a good idea and a good taste of how to work with ice in a, in a production environment. So the challenge here in this scene is to create ourselves a flame effect that just kind of just fires out here and creates this flaming effect just like a flamethrower would. And it could be for anything, for a game, a cinematic, or uh, maybe even for some compositing for film. So let's see how we can use ice to do just that. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to emit the actual ice particles from somewhere. Now, obviously the ice particles should come out from the barrel of the flamethrower here. But the uh, flamethrower works a little bit differently than, than say your regular gun. For example, we have here our fuel canister, which holds the actual fuel for the uh, flamethrower. A whole bunch of stuff happens inside the flamethrower. I'm not a flamethrower engineer, I've never built one. So I don't know exactly what's going on in here. All I know is that the flamethrower canister provides some fuel. Something happens inside the flamethrower itself. And then some flames come out here uh, in the front. But we also have this sort of little ignition torch down here. And from here, we're supposed to get a little kind of bluish ignition torch uh, flame that comes out. And it'll work almost like a, like an igniter. Uh, kind of like on a, on a li cigarette lighter or something like that. And then from here, we'll have some kind of uh, something coming out, I guess napalm or fuel or something uh, from the canister being shot out. And then the little torch here sets it on fire. And then you have yourself some flames in a nice flamethrower. So first things first, we need to create ourselves an emitter for, say, the... Mm, let's start off with the torch down here. We'll start off with the torch effect first, and then we'll work our way up to the flame effect. So this is going to be pretty much a two-part... Uh, ice effect here to, to complete this actual little challenge here. We're going to need the little torch light here from the igniter and then we're going to need the actual flames from the flamethrower's barrel. So let's create first the effect of the torch uh, being lit up right here. So let's go to primitive polygon mesh and get ourselves a disk and now what we'll do is take the disk's inner radius and just knock that down all the way to close it off and now let's move this disk up here. We're going to have to rotate it as well. I'm going to start off with rotating it 90 degrees. And I'm going to place it right in front, right about here. And I'm going to scale it down as well. Because I want the emitter to actually fit inside of this little torch well. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, kind of place this a little bit in the center here of this hole. And I'm going to scale it down by quite a bit. And I also want to rotate it because I want the uh, the torch, I don't want it firing off directly to the side here. I want it to go up at a bit of an angle here. So let's go ahead and rotate this guy here. Um, I think we rotated to about, I don't know, something like 70. Rotation value over here of 70 works out pretty good. So I'll go ahead and just type in 70. And there we go. Okay, so we have the emitter there for the little torch uh, set up. In terms of scaling, I'll go ahead and just leave it like that. That's fine. I'm not going to get too picky about that. 
Now the next thing to do is to actually uh, make this thing emit particles. But first, I'm going to, uh, with the disk selected, I'll hit enter to open up its PPG. And I'm going to change the name from disk. I'm going to call it, let's go ahead and call it ignition emitter. It's really important to have all this stuff organized by names because when our scene gets uh, heavier and heavier and there's more things in here, and you, you'll see that this scene gets pretty heavy later on, uh, you'll have a lot of things in your scene, a lot of objects, and it's really good to have them named properly to make it easier to navigate and find things in your scene. So with the uh, disk emitter here, or the ignition emitter, I'll go ahead and switch over to the simulation toolbar mode by hitting 4 on the keyboard. And now let's go to the ice menu, hit create, emit particles from selection. And once we do that, a point cloud's uh, created. Get to keep things organized, I'm going to go ahead and rename the point cloud to ignition point cloud. There we go. And now if I hit play, you'll see there's our particles. And now it's time to start uh, adjusting these particles uh, the correct way. So with this ignition point cloud selected, I'll hit Alt and 9 on the keyboard to go ahead and open up an ice tree view. And now here I can see that I have my basic node structure here that XSI created for me. And it's time to go ahead and start creating our little torch effect simulation. Okay, so let's start off with the emit from surface node right here. Let's double click it to open up its PPG and let's start to adjust some of these parameters. The rate is a little bit too low right now. It's only 100. So let's increase it to say 1000. Just so we get more particles in here. I'm going to leave the mass alone. The size I want to go ahead and increase to maybe something like 0.25. But actually it won't make much of a difference later and you'll see why. Uh, the shape over here, let's switch it from a point to sphere. And then all of these parameters I'm going to go ahead and leave alone. I'll leave the speed uh, as it is. I'm not going to change that. Let's close that PPG. The next step is to give this thing an age limit because right now the particles are just flying on forever. So I'll click on this button up here, open up the preset manager. Let's make it a little bit larger here. And let's go ahead and let's type in set just to filter this stuff out. What we want is the set particle age limit node. So let's grab that and drop it in here. I'll close that. And I want to go ahead and plug the set particle age limits execute port into the execute on emit one of the emit from surface node. So there we go. I have that plugged in. Okay. Now let's go ahead and double click it to open up its PPG and set the age limit. In terms of age limit, we don't want this thing lasting too long because it's a small little torch. So let's go ahead and put something like 0 0.75 just to make the age limit real short. Let's close that, collapse the ice tree. And let's go back to the first frame of the simulation, play again, just to see what we have. So this is what we have. You notice that the particles are not respecting my age limit. So let's go back into the ice tree. And let's open up the preset manager. And let's type in to the filter, delete, just to filter these uh, nodes out. And the node we want is the delete particle at age limit nodes. Let's bring that in. OK, let me just scroll down here. I want to go ahead and place this delete particle uh, at age limit node and plug it into our ice tree here. And I'll plug it into port number two. So it uh, happens just before the simulate particles node right here. Okay. Now if we go back, go back to the first frame of the simulation, play again, you'll notice now that the particles uh, don't go on forever. They stop after 0 0.75 seconds. All right. But we still have some more adjusting to do here. Let's go ahead and let's modify the particle size because right now the particles are too uniform in size. That's why I said earlier that the size parameter here isn't really going to make much, much of a difference. So let's open up the preset manager and let's go ahead and let's type in modify. And the node that we want is the modify particle size node. So let's drag that into our ice tree view here. And what we want to do is plug this guy into port number two, but we can see that there's another a node plugged into port 2. So let's right click on port 2 and click on insert port before. That way we'll have an empty. <coughs> Sorry about that. That way we'll have an empty port just before port, uh, port 3 right here in between. So let's go ahead and plug that modified particle size right there. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and open up its PPG and let's uh, set up the parameters here. Okay. Up here in the source parameter, we want to switch from age to age percentage. 
because we want the age percentage to determine the uh, size of the particle. And the first frame right here, we'll select it. Right click on top of it to open up this, sub, uh, this uh, menu and select key properties. Once we do that, for the value, let's go ahead and put something like 0.3, which uh, I think will work just fine. And then we'll go ahead and click on next key. And then I'll move over to the next key, which is over here on the right. And let's change the value to something like 0 0.1. Let's try that out and see how that works. Okay. So here's our uh, curve here, which is going to help to determine our uh, the size of the particles. So let me close that, collapse that, go back to the first frame and hit play. So there we go. So our particles start off a little bit big here at the beginning, and then they, they get uh, smaller as they go further out. So we get that nice little cone sort of torch effect right there. So it's pretty uniform. That's what we want for this specific effect. Let's go back into the ice tree here. And I don't think that there's any more changes that I want to make uh, per se here. I think I'm good. Okay. So that's pretty much going to do it for the little uh, simulation here of the, uh, of the torch effect. So let me go ahead and close that ice tree. Play that again. There we go. Looks pretty good. Not bad at all. Now the next thing I want to do, let me go ahead and, and stop that uh, simulation there. If I do a render region here, what I'm going to get is just a bunch of uh, spheres being rendered out here. Uh, instead of something that looks like a torch. That's because we just completed pretty much phase one of setting up this effect, which was to create the actual simulation. The next step is to actually make it look like a torch effect by adding uh, special ice shaders to make this look nice and uh, make it look like a torch effect. So now we got the simulation part done. I'm going to end this video here. And in the next one, we're going to go ahead and set up the shading and the lighting for uh, for this little torch effect right here. So I'll see you then.